Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take a look and see what happens to the friction forces and the normal forces and the reaction forces when you place an object on an inclined plane. Now we won't have any additional forces yet acting on the block that will come later. This is simply under the force of gravity. As a comparison, let's start out with just having a block on a horizontal surface like we did in the previous video. We simply have the weight of the block pushing down, the normal force pushing back, in this case, the normal force is equal to the reaction force, which is equal to the weight of the block. We have a maximum friction force that can exist between the block and the surface, which is equal to the normal force times the coefficient of static friction. However, that's the maximum possible friction force. Since there is no forces acting in the horizontal direction, there's no friction forces in this particular case. Block is not moving. Now, what happens when we put the block on an inclined plane? And there is friction between the block and the surface. The angle here is relatively small. We can see that the weight of the block acts straight down towards the center of the earth, but we can take the weight of the block and divide it into the perpendicular and parallel components to the surface. The perpendicular component is the weight times the cosine of this angle. The parallel component is equal to the weight of the block times the sine of the angle. Notice in this case that the normal force pushing back against the block is going to be directed in the same direction as mg cosine theta. It's going to be perpendicular to the surface and the normal force is going to be equal to mg cosine theta. The reaction force pushes straight up against the weight here. Notice that the reaction force is the vector sum of the normal force plus the friction force between the block and the surface. Now, the maximum friction force, again, is going to be equal to the normal force times mu sub s. But in this case, since mg sine theta, the force trying to push the block down the incline, is smaller than the maximum friction force, the friction force will be limited to the applied force, mg sine theta. And so this component of the reaction force is mg sine theta, this component is the normal force, and that's how we find the reaction force in this particular case. What happens when we increase the angle? Well, then this component, mg sine theta, begins to increase. Of course, mg cosine theta decreases a little bit. Now, the normal force pushing back against the block is still going to be equal to mg cosine theta. Now, this component of the reaction force is becoming larger. And in this case, let's say that if we're on the verge of moving, mg sine theta will be exactly equal to the maximum friction force, which is the normal force mg sine theta times, and I'm missing something here, mu sub s. Of course, we have to multiply that times the coefficient of static friction. If those are equal to each other, if this is equal, something is not right here. Let me correct that. The maximum friction force, that was not right. The maximum friction force is going to be mg cosine theta, which is the normal force, times mu sub s. That's the correct equation for the maximum friction force. And in this case, that is going to be equal to mg sine theta. Of course, at that moment, we're on the verge of the block moving. If there's any additional force pushing the block down, the block will begin to move. So let's now move on to the next example here. The block is now moving. Now we can say that mg sine theta is larger than the maximum friction force. So once the block begins to move, the friction force now becomes equal to the normal force times the coefficient of, of kinetic friction. And so it's going to be mg cosine theta times mu sub k instead of mu sub s. Now in this particular case, notice that the reaction force no longer is perpendicular in the same direction as the weight of the block. Why is that? Well, the reaction force is going to be the sum of the normal force plus this component right here, which is actually equal to the actual friction force, not the maximum friction force. Well, actually, it is equal to the maximum friction force, but since this is smaller than the mg sine theta, this will be smaller than this, and therefore the reaction force now has an angle relative to the vertical. To find the angle between the perpendicular, the normal force, and the reaction force, let's call this angle phi, we can say that the tangent of phi is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. Now the opposite side 
is the friction force, which is the normal force times mu sub k, and the adjacent side is the normal force. When we cancel out the normal forces, we can see that the tangent of phi is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction. Then to find the angle, we take the inverse tangent or the arc tangent of the coefficient of kinetic friction, and that's how we get the angle. Again, remembering that mg sine theta, the force trying to drive the block down the incline, is larger than the maximum friction force, and therefore the friction force that will exist, and therefore the block will accelerate down the incline. But what's important to see is that in the first three cases, when the block is not moving, the reaction force is perpendicular to the Earth, pointing straight up. And in this case, you can see that the reaction force is actually at an angle relative to the vertical, and that's because this component now is smaller than this component, so the reaction force is no longer perpendicular to the surface of the Earth or in a vertical direction. And so again, if we add these pieces of knowledge about friction together in video 1, video 2, video 3, we're beginning to see how this actually works. Now in the next video, we're going to start adding additional forces acting on these blocks on incline, and then we can see how we actually add these forces together and try to figure out the reaction force in each particular case. And that's how it's done.